Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be demonstrating how to use GDB to cross-debug on an embedded system. Uh, the embedded system I'm using is a BeagleBone Black, or BeagleBone Green, uh, running Linux, but as long as your target's running Linux or able to run GDB server, that's all you need. So from my host, both of these windows are currently, my shells are in uh, the host, but I'm going to SSH onto my target, so I'm going to go root at 192.168.7.2 and that'll take me in. And I'm going to connect uh, via NFS to my host so that I have access to the executable. Um, so I've got a script here to mount NFS, but it's already l mounted, so I'm going to go to my rem mount remote. It's under my apps folder. I've got some cross-compiled binaries here, and I'm going to run the array entry bad data program. And I'll just enter some values here, like uh, say 1111. My program is able to enter four values and stores them in an array, prints them back to me, and it tells me the average and the minimum value. But we can see here there's a problem that the average is coming out incorrect. So we've got to debug that. Um, let's have a look. So in this video I'm going to be going through that one program. In later videos I'm going to go through how to edit or how to debug uh, memory problems with segmentation faults. So the problem we've got now is this code in my array entry bad data is somehow not computing things correctly. I could debug it by looking at this, but I'm here to show cross debugger, so let's set that up. So the first thing I need to do is on my target, I'm going to uh, run GDB server. GDB server, and I need to then specify the port, so local host, and 2001 I'm going to use and I need to specify what it is I'm going to debug. So I'm going to debug my array entry bad data. And so now GDB server is running and listening. On my host, I'm going to run GDB multi-arc. It is the cross debugger that is able to speak to a uh, remote um, GDB, GDB server. And 192.1, I tell it the port, 168.7.2, port 2001. Oh, uh, nope, let me try that again. I got that wrong. <laughs> GDB multi arc, and then I want to specify here Q for no, ar uh, no output stuff at the startup, and I want to then specify what program to run. Um, the path to my executable is under my home folder, compute 433, public, my apps, and then array entry, uh, bad data. Okay, so now it pulled that up. If I just tried to debug right now, GDB multi-arc is going to try to run that binary on my host. And of course it can't, if I try run, it's going to tell me it can't, because it's not built for the t this host. It's only built to run on my ARM uh, embedded system. So I need to connect up to GDB server that's running. So I'm going to do target remote 192.168.7.2 port 2001. And now it is connected up. The program is still not really running, it's just ready to go. Um, so I can do things like list and see the source code. Um, but what I want to do is sort of let it run. Now before I just let it run on its own, I want to figure out where I want to put a breakpoint. So the problem I've got is that the average is incorrect. So let me find out where we printed the average. The average comes out down here. Here's my variable AVG. AVG is calculated here on the sum and the number of variables. So we can see here that maybe I'm going to settle breakpoint on line 29 where we first create the variable sum. So line 29, I want my breakpoint. So I'm going to say B29. So that's my breakpoint for line 29, and I'm going to continue. So now the program runs on the target, and I can type in my values. Let's see the same values as before 1, 1, 1, and 1. It prints out my data correctly, so that looks good. And now we've broken in with the debugger. Now, the first thing that might seem a little weird is I tried to set a breakpoint on line 29, but the breakpoint actually stopped me on line 30. So we'll kind of come back and figure out what that happened there. Um, I can use commands like print, so I can do print data, and it'll show me the array. I can do, uh, well, in fact, I can do uh, info local, and it will show me all local variables. So I got the sum, the average, and the, the minimum. So that looks okay so far. Um, so let's just start running this. I'm going to do next to run the next command. Next one to run is this loop. So I'm going to do that. And now it's going to add a value here. So let's do print 
I can print data. I can print i to start with. i is zero. Looks good. I can print data. Print data sub i. Of course, gives me a one. Looking good. And print sum. Wait. Sum is already got a value. Sum is negative almost 0.5. And so it's going to add to this initial value whatever my current value of my array is. Hmm. So this sum started off with a value. And in fact, if I scroll back a little bit, when I did the info local, I probably could have figured that out if I looked carefully. So here's my info local. It told me all the local variables, data, num values, and here's sum. Sum already has a value. Hmm, why is that? Let's look at the code, which I happen to have printed out on the screen here. In my loop, I create my variable sum back here. When I create my variable sum, I did not initialize it. So let's do that. So I'm going to come into here in my code, and sum equals zero. I'm going to rebuild. That redeploys it. Um, now I need to restart. I can't actually easily kill GDB server, so I'm going to go back over to my uh, GDB session and quit. I could have just continued uh, or stopped it, but that's good enough. I'm going to relaunch GDB server. I'm going to relaunch GDB multi-arc. I'm going to reconnect, so I have to do that uh, target remote 192.168.7.2.2001. And I connected. I can do uh, info break for all the breakpoints. I don't yet have any breakpoints, so let's put in a breakpoint on, uh, let's do line 29 again. Uh, so B29. And I can continue. We see down here this starts to run, so one, 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 one. Data is correct. Let's come into here, and now it's actually stopping on this line because it's going to run that. If I do an info local, it still prints out sum, and sum still has this bogus value, but I've not yet executed the statement. So let me do a next, and that now is finished. Let me do a uh, info local, and now we can see that it has initialized the variable sum. So that's looking good. Let's just start running it uh, next, rather. I'm going to I can do n. I can do next. And in fact, I can just hit enter because it executes the last command, and we can then sort of see it step through. Uh, at some point in time, when we're done all of these, it's come out of that loop. So we've just run. Uh, where is it now? We've just run this loop. Now we're ready to actually calculate the average. So let me do an info local. It tells me that we're dealing with four values in my array. My data is 1111. The sum is 4. The minimum is 1. The average is now still bogus, but that's OK. I'm going to do next. It has now done that. I can do a print avg, for example. And averages come up to 1. I'm going to let it run now, so I'm going to continue. And we see that we've now fixed that bug. Uh, it has exited, and the average came out correct. OK, so that's looking promising. Let's run the program again, look for other bugs, do a couple other tests. Uh, let's do the values. Let's do 10, 10, 10, 10. That looked all right. Uh, let me do the values, say, 1, 2, 3, 4. Average is looking good. Uh, but that minimum, the minimum of 1, 2, 3, 4 is not 4. Now, I've run enough programs, I could probably just debug from the code with looking at the code, but we're doing GDB. Let's play with GDB. So if I look at the code, minimum value comes out incorrect. The min is stored here, and the minimum is declared up here. So let's look, set a breakpoint at line 30. We already have a breakpoint at line 29. That's probably good enough for us. So go to here, and then back over to my other terminal. Um, I need to relaunch the GDB server. Same as before, and I'm going to just press up to go back to my previous target command. I'm now connected again. I'm going to do an info B for breakpoints, and we have the breakpoint at line 29. Perfect. So let's run. So I'm going to continue. And I wanted to type in the values, say, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to create the variable sum. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to create the variable min at data, so let's print data. OK, so it's going to take the first element of data and make it my minimum. That looks good. Do next. Let's print min. Make sure it got it. OK, got it. Uh, I'm going to keep stepping through this. Sum's fine. Now we're going to go if data sub i is greater than the minimum. Let's print data, data sub i. 
is one. Print the min. They're the same, so that's fine. We're not going to jump in there. We're going to repeat the loop. Repeat the sum. Here we have my if check. Let's do this. Print data sub i again. It's two. And the minimum is greater than the minimum. Print min. Minimum is one, so this is going to happen. It comes in, and now it's going to set the minimum to data sub i. Let's see what that did. So print min. Oops. Min. Not mint. Print the minimum. The minimum is now two. And the value here was two. So it, it took the next value, but that's not what we wanted. The minimum was, this was set to 1, and then it became set to 2. So let's look at the listing. So I'm going to list the code uh, here. I'll list a bit more. So we set the minimum to the first element. We come in here, we, we update the minimum. We say if the data is greater than the minimum, set minimum to be that data. Ah, well, we don't want to do that. We want to find the minimum, not the maximum. So the code's currently finding the maximum. This sign is wrong, so line 33 has a bug. Let's go edit that. Drop it down to be less than. And I'll rebuild. I'm going to uh, continue. Let this oops, run out. And let's start testing it again. One, two, three, four. And now it correctly stores the minimum. And the average is looking pretty good. Um, so in that, we've looked at how to list the code, we looked at doing continue to let it run, and using next to step over. When you're doing the steps, if you want to go into the function you're looking at, you want to use the command step. And we'll look at that a little bit more in the next video on this sequence. Thank you very much for watching.